Guys chatting fishing, which uh, could be a worse way to spend a Monday, right? <laughs> rather be out there. Right, exactly. <laughs> Mother Nature would straighten out and work with us. We'd be able to get out there more. Oh, man. Yeah. She's yeah. the flipper schedule from weekends to weekdays. So, yes. <laughs> more time for better weather. <clears throat> All right. Well, it looks like we are live, guys. So, welcome everybody uh, to Boating Tips Live with Marine Max. My name is Kelly Berry. Uh, we kind of took over the show for the captains. They are uh, out today. Captain Keith, Captain Nick is out. Uh, Captain Keith is actually getting ready for the uh, St. Pete Boat Show. And Captain Nick is getting hitched. So congratulations to him. So uh, today uh, we are going to be talking all things coastal fishing. And uh, you've probably remember these two fine gentlemen below me here, uh, Captain Paul Gage and Anthony Armeo. Uh, guys, how are you doing today? Um, and, and by the way, I just wanted to let everybody know before we get started, if you have any questions on both YouTube or Facebook, or you have any you know shout outs you want to make or, or questions about boating, fishing, you name it, all things water, uh, let the guys know and we can certainly get that answered for you. So guys, you want to kick it off and just get, kind of give a, a brief uh, introduction and overview of, uh, of your locations, who you are, where you came from, anything you want to talk about. Take it away, Paul. All right. I guess I'll kick it off. My name is Captain Paul Gage. Um, I was born and raised in Newport, Vermont, and um, I joined the Marine Corps right out of high school. Um, so my wife and I married her when I first joined the Marine Corps. We traveled the world for 22 years. Um, we lived in California, Okinawa, Japan, Alabama, North Carolina, um, Washington, D.C., Vermont. Um, we lived all over the place. And um, so when I retired in 2014, we decided, well, let's retire to Florida. So um, we retired in 2014, came out here to Florida, and um, we loved fishing. So we bought an offshore fishing boat. And... Um, you know, we'll talk more about it later, but we started a the Reeling Freedom Foundation, which provides no-cost charters to veterans and first responders that can't afford to get on the water. So that's what I do. I fish. That's awesome. And uh, we do have a few people tuning in. Everybody, uh, hope you're having a great day. Uh, shout out to Jag Pimp. Greetings from Boatless Tucson. Uh, I think there's a few decent lakes around that area. Not too far. And Theo Corpheus uh, says, what's up, Paul? So uh, hey, how are you guys doing today? One of, our, one of our fans on our fan page. Awesome. All right, Anthony, take it away. Paul, I don't have a, a life as colorful and crazy and, and all over the world as yours, but uh, my name's Anthony. I've been born and raised here in uh, South Florida. I've been in the boating industry for 30 years. Um, Paul's lived all over the world. I've fished a lot of places uh, through Florida, through the Caribbean, you know, the Bahamas, um, Trinidad, uh, things like of that nature, but uh, you know, it's just a, it's another day in paradise here when you say that you know, what do you do? And you're like, well, I'm in the boating business, but you know, you can fish at the same time as you're working. So it's kind of not working, but it is working. And you know, uh, thank you for welcoming me here again, and uh, let's have another great show. Awesome, thanks, Anthony, and uh, shout out to Danielle Gage. I think you know her, Paul. Uh, she yeah. says, hi, hi. Lisa Harrison says, happy new year, Danielle. Uh, Antonio de Gugas, you are the man, Paul. And Jake hey, Pimp is back at it again. Uh, he states, uh, thank you for your service to our country, Captain Paul. So, um, and Captain Paul, I have to say, all those places that you mentioned that you've lived throughout your life, uh, I, I was thinking you can fish there, you can fish there, you can fish there. There's a lot of places in those locations you can fish. But yeah, we did. We fished around the world. Absolutely. Awesome. So, uh, you know, let's kick it off. Uh, let's, let's talk all things. Um, we'll, we'll kind of start off, uh, Anthony, we'll start with you. You were mentioned, uh, it's a little chilly down there, but how's the bite these days? You know, everything's been, you know, it's off and on hit or miss with the way the weather's been changing lately. It's getting hot. It's getting cold. It's, you know, it's varying because it goes, you know, some morning down here, we're in the forties and fifties. And then by, you know, nine, 10 o'clock, it's back up in the eighties. Um, so right now things are, they're not that slow. I mean, they're, they're, they're going pretty well. I mean, the sailfish bite is on, you know, you got the North wind coming down. Um, if it's not too windy down here or, or enough wind, you know, people are using helium on their kites or they're just live baiting, you know, and it's not uncommon right now to, to hook up, you know, on four or five sails, you know, going out and, you know, some are double headers. I mean, I'm watching a lot of guys that are sending me pictures down here 
that are just, you know, between Pompano and the Keys. And, you know, no one's really complaining. It's just other than, you know, when it's a little rough for some people to go out. But and if it's rough on one side, it's, you know, calm on the in, on the inside. So you kind of got your best of both worlds that like that down here. So for all the people out there, I, I think of uh, I got a, a lot of buddies and family up north who come down occasionally to Florida. And when they do come down, they want to catch something. Uh, what are some of the things, you know, if they only get a few days to, to hook up with something there in, in South Florida, Southeast Florida, what do you recommend? Uh, what route would they take? I mean, right now, I mean, you, you can pretty much troll, you know, and, you know, if you can't get anything on a bite that way, you, the reefs are down here. You can go fish the flats down in, you know, Biscayne Bay. You go down the Stiltsville area, you can head down to the Keys because being very centrally located down here, if you have a trailer boat, you know, you could be in the Keys in an hour and a half or you could be up in the Stewart, you know, area the same way, you know, from where we are in Fort Lauderdale. So, I mean, you're refishing between your snapper, um, your offshore fishing, you know, the dolphin are, are hit or miss right now. Um, the sailfish are, are, are biting. Um, Wahoo come in and out. The Kings are coming in and out. So it's you basically you you can set up to go all day offshore or all day inshore or a little bit of both. Awesome. And Captain Paul being on the West coast here, and we do have Michael Lucas here saying hi from safety Harbor, not too far from you. Uh, you know, what, how's, how's the fishing these days on the West coast? Well, uh, guy grouper season just ended on uh, December 31st. <clears throat> so a lot of people are, are shifting focus. Um, with the spring, you know, you can bring the kingfish come in here. We still have red grouper. We got a lot of mangrove snapper. Now I'm speaking all offshore. If it's if it's crappy offshore, we're blessed that we can do inshore too, because there's so many different places inshore here. You get your snook, your redfish, your trout, um, all kinds of stuff like that. But a lot of people lately have been doing shallow water grouper trolling with those plugs. Hmm. Um, the gag grouper year was pretty tough this year, and we didn't get a lot of gag groupers. But everybody was trolling them up the month of December, just killing it really, really close to shore with them, them plugs in about eight feet of water. It was crazy. That's yeah. pretty cool. And, uh, we They're do biking, have that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. The weather's been, uh, chillier these days down here in Florida, but it doesn't really seem to affect the fishing too much. Uh, shout out real quick to Deanna Carvalho, uh, wishing we had that Florida weather up here in South Carolina. As I mentioned, it's even a little chilly here in Florida, but, uh, South Carolina, I'm sure it gets a little chillier. And uh, shout out to uh, Susan Suter Rasmussen saying hi from California. Uh, that's a, another good spot to my mother -in -law. <laughs> catch some fish. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, uh, so I have a list of questions to go off of here, and we can certainly do so. But of course, you know, all the people out there listening, uh, all you uh, on Facebook and YouTube, if you have any questions for uh, the captains here uh, in regards to all things fishing or all things boating. I mean, these guys know everything there is to know about boats too. Uh, certainly leave them in the comments section and we'll be able to get to them. So to, card, uh, to start off here, uh, we hear you're into tournament fishing. Please tell us more. That's that's the first question I got. Who wants to take that one? Let's see here. Let's go with Captain Paul. Go ahead, Anthony. <clears throat> you want me to talk? Yeah, I don't tournament care. fishing down here. Yeah, tournament fishing down here, you know, you have your, you know, your shootouts, you have either for Lauderdale, you have Miami, they do it in Stewart, Jupiter. Um, sometimes it's, you know, but there's all different um, areas of it too, you know, different, uh, I'm a loss for words, different, uh, so fish are targeting, you know, pelagic, you know, yep. there's different groups, you know, you have your kids, you have your women anglers, junior anglers, and you have, you know, uh, uh, biggest catch, most overall. Um, there, there are a lot of there are a lot of fun down there. They can be very competitive. You know, you get a lot of people that you know, I'm better than your boat. You know, we're going to be faster than you. You know, but but it's all fun and games. You know, it's fun. You know, it it creates more of a not not so much a rivalry, but you know, you start to to know more people in the industry. You know, hey, what do you do for a living? I know you got a boat. Are you in the marine industry? You know, some guy might be a roofing company. Another guy might be own a, a pool company somebody might be a painter and somebody just might be a, a guy that likes to go fishing on the weekends and takes his friends so fishing kind of brings everybody together in a sense and you know it kind of just relaxes you because once you get in the boat and you get away from land and you step foot in that boat whatever issues you have whatever life is bringing you whatever the, the whatever it is it's gone because you don't even 
pay attention to. Your focus there now is yourself, fishing, having fun, and you know, enjoying the day. Yeah, well said. I, I it makes me think I had an opportunity a few years back to uh, join the 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 team down at Marine Max uh, in Key Largo uh, for mm -hmm. a fishing tournament aboard the fifty four GT Hatter Rascal, I think it was at the time. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, just those, the, the kind of passion that those guys have down there for, for fishing and being aboard that kind of boat was just something special for sure. All right. Captain Paul, what do you think? Uh, the question was, we hear you're into tournament fishing. Please tell us more. And I think, you know, your episode was all about tournament fishing. So tell us a little bit about what you, what you got. Yeah. So we got into tournament fishing uh, a couple of years ago. Um, I mentioned at the beginning, we started the Reeling Freedom Foundation. Um, when I first came to Florida, you know, we had a ski boat and we put it out in the bay a couple times and then we figured out that wasn't the right boat for Tampa Bay. So we went shopping and we found ourselves a nice offshore fishing boat. Um, so my, my wife, my father and I would go fishing every day. And when we came in, we would see veterans lined up on the pier. So I said to my dad one day, I'm like, how cool would it be just to pull up there and say, hey, let's go fishing and just grab random veterans and take them fishing. So we did that for about a year. And um, we figured out that's a lot of money. So one day, uh, my wife, Danelle, said, hey, why don't we turn this into a nonprofit and raise awareness for PTSD, suicide awareness, you know, stuff like that, and get sponsors in order to pay for these trips. So we, we did that. We turned the Railing Freedom Foundation into a 501c3 nonprofit. We have a lot of sponsors, and they pay for trips. Um, to get into the tournament fishing, we... We were doing a lot of veteran trips here and there, and our sponsors are into the tournament circuit. So a lot of our sponsors wanted us to fish in the tournaments in order to, you know, bring awareness to their brand. So we run, you know, the Wild West with um, Angler Army Fishing Club. We do all their tournaments. They're our biggest sponsor. Um, we do the King of the Beach, the Sun Coast Kingfish Classic. We do all the Kingfish tournaments on this coast. And in 2021, I think we're going to travel with the Angler Army Fishing Club um, all the way up the coast as far as they as far as they go up on the east coast um, But we, we try to on the trips We bring a veteran on all of the fishing tournaments in order to you know, give them a day on the water raise awareness And um, it's just we, we have fun doing it, you know bringing someone someone green out in the boats not always the uh, the best idea But um, but it's fun, you know, it's fun. We have a good time with it yeah, I'm sure you see a, a whole, uh, you know, slew of different types of skill sets there in terms of the fishing. Some people probably, like you said, green as there can be, but others probably, you know, they probably know what they're doing a little bit. Paul, it kind of ties into uh, what I was talking about, about, you know, you're, you're helping somebody take their mind off of whatever's going on in the world. You know, granted, you, you are, you're focusing on, you know, people that, have whatever issues whether there it's a disability you know whatever it is but it 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 brings that sense of fun calmness getting away escaping you know even if it's for a day even if, even if it's for you know the whole weekend but you know it's it's something good that you know it, it puts a little extra life in you make you live longer you know and it makes you feel good that you're doing something like that about it you know and then your sponsors too yeah they're sponsors and they're helping you out but the end of the day they know they're doing something good and it you know it's it's a good for everyone not just for themselves very well said anthony uh and we do have a, a a bunch of people watching today again so um i see there's a lot of people here so we want to see uh, your questions for the captains here uh anything you guys can think of in terms of fishing or boating please leave it for the captains and and they can answer it here live uh also dan sal says hi paul and danelle miss you guys uh, so Captain Paul's got quite a few, uh, friends on here. Uh, let's get to the next question here. What are some of the best places to fish on East coast of Florida? And then we'll also switch over to the other coast and, and see West coast. But what do you think, Anthony? I spend a lot of time in the year. Um, I have a friend that lives up in Fort Pierce. We go up there. There's a monster snook up there. Uh, the redfish is, is, is fun, you know, up there as well. But between the snook, they have a permit up there. Pompano, um, you sit in the inlet with some live bait. Um, you go on the, the flats also, but and big, big monster trout too along the, uh, the, the the river because a lot of their docks go out about 100 or some of them go out even longer than that, 200 feet, and they'll have like, you know, eight or nine boats that are on lifts. So you're either pitching live bait, you're throwing uh, plugs up in there, and it's just, it's just fun. You know, you can get some small pinfish, you bring them in, you can catch some nice trout. 
even the the tarpon like around the bridges at night same thing with the snook you know that's a fun place that i like to go to i take my son up there as well you know it's a lot of fun up there you ever make it to like mosquito lagoon area yeah we fish there at banana river um everything up there it's, it's a lot of fun you know i mean it's it's about i don't know an hour and a half two hours from my house or i can head down to the keys and go the other way mm -hmm. but my all-time favorite is going to louisiana for the redfish out there that's 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 a trip to remember you know you want to have something that'll put a, a good memory in your kid a friend you know family member you go out there even if you don't have your own boat there's plenty of places out there that charter boats for the day with a guide they're pretty reasonable but i mean fishing there with the redfish i mean it's not uncommon 20 pounds all day long and it just it'll wear you out well, speaking of uh, the Gulf Coast there, uh, west coast of Florida and in north north of there in Louisiana, uh, Captain Paul, what what do you recommend in terms of uh, some good fishing spots around there? Yeah, so we don't venture away from where we live that often. I mean, I like to tell people we live in paradise because it, it truly is. I mean, I can go out any day of the week, inshore, offshore, it doesn't matter, and I can load my fish box. Um we, we did a trip a couple of weeks ago. We went out to the middle grounds uh, with our boat and we had seven guys on the boat and we limited out on mangrove snapper that were all 18, 20, 30, you know, 35 inches long. And uh, we all in all, we had 140 fish on the boat when we came back. And that was just wow. the guys jumping in the boat last minute, ran out, filled up, ran back. Um, there's a lot of reefs out here. You have the Clearwater Reef, the Dunedin Reef the Tarpon Reef, there's Pasco 1, Pasco 2. There's so many reefs out here. I can run out there in a couple hours and load up on grunts, mangrove snapper, red grouper. Um, it's it's loaded over here. We, like we say, we live in paradise. If you want to run, you can go out to the middle ground, which is you know, 70, 80 miles out there. And when you get out there, it's we call it Jurassic Park because the fish are uh, ridiculous. Um, a little bit south of that, you have um, the, the Elbow which is south of the middle grounds. And it's a little crazy there too. And if you want to get really crazy, you split the two and you go out to the steps. And um, that's where you get the deep water and you get and you get some really big fish. Uh, a lot of my friends have been going out there and just killing it. Um, one of our charter captains, uh, uh, Derek Engel, he's a, a jig master. He goes out there in the four or 500 feet of water and he's just using jigs. He's been catching sailfish, grouper, um, kingfish. It doesn't matter. He's been killing it with jigs in deep, deep water. Also inshore, my charter captains that run inshore trips, um, every day I'm getting pictures of massive grouper, massive snook, redfish, trout, massive fish right here in inshore. Even the tarpon are running right now too. Tarpon everywhere out here. Mm -hmm. So like I say, we live in paradise and there's always fish every day of the week out here in our, in our coast. That's, that's great. And you know, the rest of the country thinks that when they hear Florida, they think uh, definitely of tarpon, snook and redfish. But you, you mentioned a few other species like the snapper and a few others that are just a ton of fun to catch. So, and did I hear it right? You said uh, catch a sailfish on a jig. That's something I have yet to hear much about, but that's pretty yeah, crazy. There's a picture. I, can, I could pull it up. It, it was crazy. He's caught everything on the jig. He's like the jig master. He started telling me he was doing it. I'm like, yeah, right. But uh, you look at his Instagram, you look at his Facebook, he's the jig master. It's insane. Maybe we can get the jig master yeah. on a, an upcoming episode of Boating uh, Tips Live here one of these days and kind of he can provide some I, of his I secrets. Can coordinate it. Kelly, some, something else to, to mention too on the West Coast, you guys got to run pretty far to get into some deep water. You know, over yeah, here, uh, I mean, not, a foot out, not that far. And it, it, yeah, over here, it starts dropping quick where we are. You know, yeah, here so it's about a foot of mile. to be as like, far off. If you want to get deep, you got to run far. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. So we do have a few other people uh, asking some questions here. Theo Corpheus uh, also says Tarpon Springs has it all. Tell them, Paul. Uh, I think you're kind of mentioning some of those areas around there. Tarpon Springs. Shout out to Tarpon Springs. Uh, Michael Lucas says, what fish will be fished in the next three months on the Florida West Coast, Sarasota and below? So maybe he's saying, uh, you know, what are some of the, the hot fish? you know, the hot runs for, for the next few months. Well, right now you get gag groupers closed. So, so that's kind of, you know, one of the, one of the favorites, but you tell you mangrove snapper, we get some massive ones out here. And honestly, I'd rather have a mangrove snapper than a grouper any day of the week. Anyway, you know, red snapper, obviously we have a limited season on those, um, but mangrove snapper, the Key West grunts, 
Um, always plenty of those out there. Red grouper, we have plenty of those out here too. So for the next three months, that's pretty much what we'll be targeting. And hogfish too. Um, it used to be hogfish. The only way you could get them was shoot them with a spear. But I tell you what, every time we go out, we get four or five, six of them every single trip. I don't know if we've got the we've got a master or what it is, but we've been catching a lot of hogfish out here. That's awesome. Good, good for sandwiches. Anthony, uh, yeah. What, what about you? Uh, East Coast. What in the next few months? What are some of the uh, the species to look for? Let's see. You're probably down here on the southeast side. You're, you know, you got your jack ravels. I mean, there's, you know, believe it or not, inshore you got largemouth bass fishing down here. It's going to be great. Um, you got uh, bonefish, cobia, um, a lot of your offshore fishing between the grouper the mackerel the kings sales are are coming in still um snapper you know don't forget them you know yep. and then by the time that all rolls around then you're into the summer and you're in, into the bigger you know fish you know dolphin and stuff like that as well very cool it's kind of, i'm over here it's kind of like a just a big melting pot because you know five yep. minutes one way you're catching one thing five minutes another way you're catching something else well, and there, there's an elusive species I've yet to catch in Southeast Florida, which I just have always wanted to, which is the peacock bass too, which are kind of a transplant for South Florida, but a ton of fun to catch too, huh? Have you ever gone for those? Yeah, down by where I live, um, I had a guy that used to work in the, uh, the marine industry. He worked for Navionics and for years he was driving me crazy. It's like, Anthony, I see all the pictures, you know, you and your son put on Facebook, uh, the peacock bass that are in your backyard. He goes, you might have to ever come down there. And I'm like, yeah, no, I don't care, whatever. So he gave me a call a couple weeks ago. And he was asking me for like three years. Him and his friend came down. They brought a little uh, John boat, like 12 footer. They put in the lake. He said within two hours, they had about 90 different peacock bass. One after the next, he was sending me pictures. I was like, I told you. And he drove <laughs> all the way down from Melbourne, you know, and these are just in little lakes. I mean, when you start to, to go out, you know, into like the big canals and stuff like that, you know, you'll, you, I mean, they're, they're like a freshwater snapper. It's the only way you can really, you know, compare, you know, Hey, what does it fight like? And I'm like, well, that's pretty much what it is. You know, it's a lot of fun. That's cool. Yeah. That's definitely on the bucket list for sure. And uh, so tell us a little bit about um, the Marine Max fishing team. Uh, you know, I know the last time we had you on, we discussed a little bit, but for those who haven't, uh, you know, had a chance to hear about that, tell us a little bit about the Remax fishing team and, of course, the boat too that's behind it. Yeah, we've uh, we've had a joint venture with Ray Marine for about <clears throat> almost ten years now, and every year we do a different Boston whaler, and Ray Marine equips the boat with whatever their latest and greatest is from uh, between the sonars, the radar, FLIR cam, everything you can think of, and pretty much it puts you in a position where if you can't catch something, uh, you're, you're kind of to blame. You know, we've yeah. gone everything from a 28 whaler. We've done a 32, a couple 35s, a couple 37s, two 38s. Um, and we'll fish anywhere on the East coast. And then the boat will travel to boat shows. It'll go to the Bahamas for a couple of trips. We'd go with whaler. Um, we go out to the Abacos. We'll go to Bimini. We'll go to Nassau. Um, along the way, we'll, you know, we'll be fishing with customers, just taking people out to the sandbar, just, you know, like I said, making them escape from, you know, every day, you know, this past year, obviously it's been a little, uh, slow due to, uh, what's been going on, but you know, we're, we're looking forward to get back into it this year and, you know, just make it another great fun year, you know? And real quick, you did mention uh, Bahamas. I'm sure somebody sooner or later is going to ask about that. What's, uh, you know, opportunities to get over there or anything? What's what's currently happening with the Bahamas? They're not turning you around to coming there. You just have to have a uh, COVID test done within three days. You have to clear customs, you know, like you normally would. Um, but everything is just like been on the back burner for a while. You know, there's there hasn't been a lot of tourists and stuff visiting the island. So, I mean... Once everything gets up in the clear, everybody will be running over there before you know it. But people are still making the trek over. I mean, from here, it's only 52 miles. It's not that far. Um, we I've had people go in on, on great weather, as small as a 17-foot whaler. You've seen her on all of our getaways, this lady, Nancy. Um, she takes a 17-whaler over there, you know, right next to the 65 Sea Rays, the big azimuths. Um, 
but people just run over there. They're like, we, we got to get away. We got to escape. And, you know, they'll go over there. They'll fish. Fishing, I, I would imagine right now over there has got to be pretty phenomenal because uh, it's been, I don't want to say less fished, but it's just been basically locals. Not a lot of people have been traveling there. Yep. Well, for all those viewers out there, again, uh, if you have any fishing questions or boating questions, now's the time to leave them in the comments section. Uh, we're streaming live on both YouTube and Facebook, so check them out. Uh, quick shout out to Sarah Brunson, who said, Branson, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, says, Paul, Mike Sullivan says, Derek is unreal when it comes to jig fishing, so he clearly has a, an inside scoop on that. And, uh, of course, Michael Lucas saying uh, all the all the fish you mentioned are also delicious, which is certainly true. So, uh, Captain Paul, you know, we did talk jig fishing a little bit, but uh, tell us a little bit more about that West Coast and, you know, what are, what are some of the best ways to, to get hooked up with some fish over on the West Coast? You know, what, what kind of baits are you using? A uh, little inside scoop on that. You know, it all depends on the day of the week. It's kind of funny. I um, when, when I go fishing on my boat, I bring everything. I bring live bait, dead bait. I bring artificials. I bring jigs. I bring everything. Um, people kind of laugh at me when they get on the boat. They're like, oh, my God, you have so much bait. Um, but I tell you, we've gone out there some days, and you can't get nothing to bite on anything but a live pinfish. And then some days you can't get them to bite anything besides a dead pinfish. It's it's insane. All the guys on the left side of the boat using dead bait, um, they're cleaning up. The guys on the right side of the boat got live bait on there, and they can't buy a bite. Um, and, and and I mean that literally. Last time we were out, Mike put a, a ten dollar bill on his hook, and he couldn't buy a bite. It's kind of funny. <laughs> but uh, we literally use everything, everything, everything out here. If we're trolling, we use either dead ballyhoo, or we're going to use blue runners, or we're going to use um, cigar minnows. It, it's it depends on the day of the week and also what you're targeting. You know, if you're looking for kingfish, you're going to have to troll them ballyhoo or troll them uh, um, blue runners. If you're looking for grouper, you got to troll the plugs or or bottom fish with some grunts or some pinfish or some Boston mackerel. Boston mackerel is, is kind of a secret over here. A lot of people don't don't use it. They don't they don't know about it. But you can go buy Boston mackerel and the grouper love the Boston mackerel. It's crazy. It's really stinky, oily fish and they kill it. But nobody ever uses it. You know, it's funny. So pretty much the answer is you just whatever day of the week it is, it's probably going to be something different, huh? Very true. Every day is different. That's why I bring everything. Yeah, I admit, that's a good point. And uh, there's been a few times being out on the boat and, you know, you're with a captain or something who he knows it all. And uh, he's using live bait and uh, my tried and true, if, if nothing's hitting is just a soft plastic, just toss it out and bring it back. And there's been a couple of times where they'll look at me and be like, that's not going to do anything. You know, that's not going to do anything. And then sure enough, just, you know, snook or whatever else. I'll just nail that. So you never know. You just never know. All right. So let's move For along sure. here and, uh, let's, uh, let's just say, uh, uh, in terms of uh, stories, I'm sure you guys have a million stories, uh, fishing stories, some tall tales, some are maybe a little more truthful. Uh, what is the best fishing story you can tell? Or what, what, what's the first fishing story that comes to mind? Uh, we'd love to hear it. I guess mine's my embarrassing fishing story when I was on the boat with you and Keith that time. We were doing a photo shoot and we're watching all these guys fish and we're just, you know, videoing doing whatever we have to do and i'm looking Working. behind the boat i'm seeing all, all these sailfish just they were just lined up like they were getting ready to race just sitting there and all of a sudden i'm looking at them they go right under the they come right towards the motors right right in between where you're like the perfect spread would be if if you could have a perfect day and they went right under the boat we saw them on the on the plotter in 3d we watched them go to the port side of the boat and they went over to this other boat that was probably, I don't know, 150 yards from us. And the guys just hooked up on the fish. So Keith looks at me and he's like, you have any, bro you know, and I'm like, I don't have anything in there because we were just going out here to, you know, shoot some pictures and stuff. And he just, he ended up his, uh, his video. He did it on YouTube. He goes, here I am sitting on the back of the boat, beautiful Florida. It was cold. It was whatever. And we don't have a rod on the boat. There go the fish. You know, it was like the, it was like just being dumb about it. You know, I was just, if I didn't know we were going to, you know, have a yep. couple hours, whatever out there to mess around or whatever, I'd have been bringing rods and reels and 
I don't ever go on a boat without him. It's just I got caught for that time. <laughs> well, and I think uh, didn't didn't Keith say at the beginning of that day, like, hey, do you got any? Uh, you know, do we have any tackle? We, I forgot a rod and reel, and sure enough, we're thinking, okay, well, we're not going to be seeing anything out there. And sure enough, it's like I emptied everything out to make it look perfectly clean and you know, like pristine. You know, not like a boat looks when you're fishing when there's stuff everywhere. You know, but hey, it just. One for the books, you know. Yeah, and it certainly showed uh, that that Ray Marine those Ray Marine systems work because you can see all the blips on the on the radar yep. there, saying that there's fish everywhere. It went right under us and kept going. Excellent story, Captain Paul. What's the first uh, you know cool fishing story that comes to your mind? So I'm going to tell you a rookie story, a rookie mistake. We uh we had just bought the boat, and um, I literally went to Bass Pro Shop with my friends and said, hey. Here's my American Express. Let's outfit my boat. Whatever we need. So, of course, I got a lot of stuff. So, they bought me two um, Shimano TLD 30 reels with really nice Shimano rods. So, we went out fishing and uh, somebody had given me a spot. So, we went out to that spot and, and it was obviously off season. And um, I have my spot on the boat in the back corner where I like to fish. Well, that day, my brother was in my corner. So, I was like, all right, whatever, I can deal with this. So I'm in the middle of the boat and I'm fishing. I pull in a massive grouper. I don't know, 35, 40 inches. Of course, he's out of season, right? And like I said, we were new to this. So we didn't really know 100% what we were doing. So I put him on the rail and I was going to vent him. Um, so I went to vent him and he closed his mouth and cut my thumb wide open. Consequently, mm -hmm. fell in the water. And he was still hooked to my TLD 30. So there goes the fish and there goes my rod and reel with it. Oh, so I was... <laughs> a little mad, a little depressed. You know, there goes you know six, seven, eight hundred dollars in the ocean. I told everybody, finish what you're doing, reel in, we're gone, we're going home. So we went home. <laughs> I went to the uh, fishing store, bought two new setups, cheap ones. I weren't buying no more expensive ones. Bought two cheap setups. Um, we went back out. We went fishing. Danelle kept breaking off. She hooked the bottom and break off. And I'm like, this has got to end. So I let out ten feet of line. She'd hook on the bottom, break off again. We did that like five times. Then she says, hey, I'm hooked again. So I'm like, all right, whatever. So I put my rod down. I walk over to the edge of the boat. And um, she says, it's coming. So she's reeling. And all of a sudden, I see a great big bright yellow glow. I'm like, what the hell has she got? <laughs> Honest to God, she caught my rod on the top eyelet. Oh, man. The day after. And we never even marked a spot. But she caught that TLD 30. That's amazing. The, That's an impossibility. Yeah, what are the odds that that could happen? That you have that spot mark now. Oh, I've got a mark now. <laughs> but we never marked the spot, and we had different people on the boat both days. And both days, they were like, oh, my God. You know? Yeah. No one would ever believe me. But, you know, it really happened. But uh, it was pretty crazy. And you said it was caught uh, uh, on the rod, like the top eyelet, so it's like the smallest little hole just hooked it through there or what? Jeez. Yeah. Yeah, she hooked it right through the eyelet. You know, we take a lot of veterans out, and we lose a lot of tackle overboard, unfortunately. Um, but I try not to give them the most expensive rod and reel on the boat, you know, in case it goes overboard. You know, if they have a little bit of experience, I'll give them a good rod and reel. If they don't, hey, you know, here's this old PEM 110. You know, if you break it, you break it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yep. Has your wife let you live you down? Let you live it down yet? No, not really. <laughs> well, I'm sure you're thanking My son her dropped her. A, a couple of months ago. My son dropped one a couple of months ago, and he went overboard after it, and he actually got it. Wow. Pretty amazing. Yeah. Well, to be I'm sure – I think I've seen a few videos, too, where people go over with the tackle. So I think uh, you lucked out on that one. Uh, we, we've shown that on a few episodes. Um, so also, uh, you know, in terms of a bucket list uh, – what what's something that you know what's what's the uh, the unicorn out there what's what's something that you've always wanted to catch but you've just never caught i know anthony you said bonefish uh, you haven't caught one yet but you know what what's what are one of those species we'll start with you anthony that you've always wanted to catch but you just haven't hooked up with it yet like i said i mean it's pretty much a bonefish you know i mean i do a lot of inshore fishing too and offshore fishing but i mean i've been in the boat with people that have caught bonefish we've gone after them um and here I am in the back. I'll be catching a redfish. I'll catch a snook. I'll catch a tarpon. I'll catch a sheep's head. I'll catch anything, a triple tail. 
and there's someone else is in the boat and they're bonefish, you know, <laughs> and I'm like, I, I just don't get it. But some things are just that, you know, the elephant in the room. You just got to eventually I'm going to wind up going probably to the Bahamas and uh, I'm just going to set out to do just that. You know, I, I mean, I, I've been in the Bahamas with other friends and, you know, we weren't even fishing for bonefish and they'd reel up for bonefish. You know, we were in Honeymoon Harbor and I'm just like, how? What, 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 you know, just, you're not even trying. And I'm like, I'd be out there trying, sweating to death. And I'm like, nothing. But one day, that that's definitely on my bucket list. It's probably going to be at a time when you're not expecting it either. You're just, you know, hanging out, just tossing a few lines in, and then there you go. I'll take it any way I can get it at that point. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Paul, what about you? Yeah, the one that comes to mind is a swordfish. You know, we go to the Keys every year for mini lobster season, and uh, we go out to the humps. We fish for the tuna, for the mahi, and uh, we get some good kingfish out there every now and then. But um, one of these days, I'd like to take a charter out and go, go out and get a swordfish. My boat's not equipped for that, but, um, you know, I think it'd be really cool to catch a swordfish. Got to go deep with those guys. Oh, yeah. Yeah, those are quite elusive, too. Uh, well, the only one I could think of, uh, and it's not so much saltwater at all, but uh, musky. I've caught, a, you know, thousands probably of northern pike, uh, but just never a musky, uh, and, which sounds crazy. If you've, you're from the north, they're probably all laughing, but, you know. Uh, they're they're kind of that that bonefish in a way of just being elusive and and just definitely a little bit more hard to catch than some of the other species. So uh, we'd like to hear from you guys. What are some of those uh, fish out there that uh, you've just you know you've always been fishing for your entire life? You just never uh, got one on the line. We'd love love to hear this. Theo Corfia says mermaid. So um, yes, maybe one day Theo. You never know. Um, and and again, we would love to hear from everybody about their fish uh, that's on their bucket list. So. Kelly, that fish, well, obviously being from South Florida here, I don't know much about musky or pike, but are those fish that you eat or they're just game fish? Uh, you know, we've eaten a bunch of pike. Uh, you can certainly eat them. They're super bony. I think there's certain, there, there's people that know how to just, uh, you know, flay them right to, to get most of the bones out of them. But something you probably don't want to eat too much, and especially the, the, the muskies are more of a somewhat trophy fish. Even the smaller ones, is, they're just more uh, rare. So you don't really ever want to, you know, keep them. Uh, but walleye, that's a, that's a completely different story. You want to keep any walleye you get, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. So, well, guys, uh, we have a few more minutes so we can chat. And again, if anybody has any questions out there, we'd love to hear from you. Um, but uh, in terms of, uh, I have a question. What's your favorite boat to fish? I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of boats, uh, you know. Um, you know, what, what, what have you been aboard? Has it been a, you know, what, and by what boat I'm saying more, what type of boat? Do you want something that's more of a, a GT that you can get offshore real quick or more of a flats boat or a, you know, center console? What are you thinking? Anthony, we'll start with you. I've fished in just about everything. Um, when you want to go comfort and style, you know, your sport fish, you kind of have the best of both worlds because you can be fishing all day or sleeping inside. It's a bike gets slow, but you're in something big. Um, spend the weekend on it. Um, but honestly, I, to me, I, I like fishing, you know, either a center console or a bay boat because if it's calm offshore, I'll go offshore if it's, it's if it, and fish out there. If not, I'll fish the flats, you know, go to the sandbar, hang out, see some friends, you know, but it's more of a versatile boat for what I do. But a lot, you know, but it also depends on, you know, what you're going for, you know, what you're doing, how long you're spending out there. You know, some people just... I don't know how some of the people can fish in a in a flats boat when all they're used to is fishing, you know, offshore and big center consoles or or yacht, you know, like big sport fishes. You know, it's just it depends, you know, whatever whatever works for you. But for me, I like fishing inshore, you know, and it, with the ability to go offshore. And um, we did mention the Marine Max fishing boat. Tell us a little bit about what what boat it is currently and uh, what is it powered by. Tell us a little bit about that boat. The one that we just finished was a 38 Outrage with a triple Merc 400 R's on it. Um, we're still up in the air of what we're going to do this year, so it's kind of like a surprise. So that boat has everything in it. I mean, it was equipped with, you know, between 3D transducers, 1KW through-haul transducers that had FLIR cameras. It had um, just – if you didn't catch something, it was your fault, you know, and – you know, it's the easiest way to explain. I mean, I, I've been out fishing with guys that, you know, they'll go out in a small flats boat that have, 
zero electronics, but they know where they're going. You know, they're, they're hometown boys in a sense where they've been raised there all their whole life. Some guys down in the Keys, they don't need a GPS. They don't need a compass. They know when the tides are right, when the moon is right, you know, when the weather's perfect for whatever fish they want to fish. So, I mean, having the electronics, does it make it, it makes it a little bit, you have a, a better edge in a sense, but you know, when you know what you're doing and you know, everything's lined up or whatever, and you know, you just go out there and you, you have fun. It's like the guy that's got everything. He's got the, you know, expensive gear and thinks Comes he back has, with nothing. exactly <laughs> thinks he has it all figured out until, uh, until it's, it's time to, to, to pull a fish in, uh, yeah. Captain Paul, what about you? Yeah. My favorite kind of bow is like a, is like a wide open center console. Um, we bought the Game Fish 27 from Pro Marine down to Bay Pines. They're one of our sponsors. Um, and I love the Game Fish 27. It's a great boat. Um, it's a it's a kind of a crossover family fishing boat. So you can go to the island and, you know, you have a lot of seats. So you can bring a lot of people on it. We've had over 20 people on the boat to bring them to the island. Um, but when you go offshore and you go fishing, um, you're kind of tripping over, you know, bean bags and coolers and people's stuff because there's not enough room in the front of the boat. Um, so ideally we want an open bow boat, open boat. Um, I believe we're getting ready to sell our game fish and we're going to buy one of the new Aquila 28s that may be coming out. Um, cool. we got to run that one there a few weeks ago and we've been talking with the, uh, the Aquila guys. And, um, I think reeling freedom is going to run an Aquila 28 in 2021, 2022, which has got a great big wide open bow. So we can put a lot of, you know, people on the boat. There's a lot of freedom to fish because when you're fishing kingfish. Um, if that kingfish runs, you got to turn around and chase it. And if you got a bunch of crap in the front end of the boat, it, it's kind of hard to uh, to chase after that fish. And if you got to walk around the front of the boat, you know, it, it kind of creates a problem when you can't walk around the front of the boat. So, you know, the bigger, the wider open, the better, in in my opinion. That's great. Yeah. And uh, I guess, you know, anytime you have a, a catamaran type hole, uh, you'll you'll get a lot more stability too. So going offshore, that probably helps out. Um, yeah. what, what's, uh, what are a few things that you guys would not leave shore without, uh, when you're out, you know, on a going fishing, anything that you could think of that you're like, I need to make sure that I have this before I leave the, the docks, anything you can think of? I'm pretty much like a doomsday prepper cause <laughs> I'll bring anything, you know, I mean, we'll be on a boat and someone will be asked for something weird, you know? And I'll be like, yeah, I have it in my bag, whatever it is. Or or my GoPro died. I need another. I got a bat. Yeah, I got plenty of those. Or, or just tweezers, just the weirdest stuff. But, I mean, when you think about it, I mean, it just depends. You know, going offshore, yeah, bring an EPER. Make sure you got your VHF. You know, here I am with all the electronics in the world on the boat. And every time I travel offshore, I got another handheld GPS. I got another VHF. I got an EPER. You know, there's a... Uh, first aid kit on the boat. I got a small one. It's just, you know, five phone chargers. It's just, you never know where you're going to end up, you know? Well, you know what that's called, Anthony? Being prepared. Experience. Yeah. You've been out there so many times that at this point, you just know what what you need, what you don't need. And uh, I think people, uh, you know, they pick up on that too. When they forget something, they're like, crap, I don't have it. And you're like, I had that problem once too. Yeah. Yep. What about you, Captain Paul? Yeah, pretty much the same thing. All of the above. Uh, communications is a is a big ticket item for me. Um, I, I, we went out there. It was a few months ago. We got one of the brand new trolling motors put on the front of the boat, the uh, the big, big eighty four inch one, and uh, we were way out in the middle grounds. We were hundred miles offshore, and it would, it didn't work. And I was like, "Are you kidding me?" And I didn't bring an anchor with me. I was like, "Are you kidding me?" So I picked up my uh, my sat phone, and I texted the company. And they text me back. And within two minutes, we had that thing up and running. You know, yeah. so communications, communications, communications. Got to have it. I did have an anchor on the boat, just not the one I bring all the time. I've got an anchor I put in a basket with 500 feet of line. And I'll bring that anchor when I'm going deep. Um, but um, we didn't bring it that day because we had, you know, the 84-inch rodan on the front of the boat. That didn't work. <laughs> works <Yep>. now. <laughs> it works now, that's for sure. I was happy I had that sat phone that day. Yeah, we bring everything. I, I, I don't know. I kind of overload the boat, but you know what? I'd rather be safe and have a bunch of crap than, than not be. Because, you know, we take a lot of veterans out there. You don't know what's mm -hmm. going to happen, you know? So I want to make sure I have communications. I have, I have everything available. 
in case something happens, we have everything covered because you never know what you're going to get into. Yeah. And to play off both of those, I think one thing that people would re- want to remember is redundancy of having a backup to things because you never know what you're going to lose in the water or that breaks or something. I mean, you even mentioned GoPro batteries. If one dies and then you get the, you know, the, that swordfish that you never caught, you know, you get hooked up and you want some video and no more batteries, you're, you're prepared. <laughs> Talk about redundancy. I mean, it is a, it's a funny story. We went to the Bahamas one time with uh, Joe Garcia and uh, everybody knows I travel with everything. My wife gets so mad because I have a backpack and I tell her, I said, look, if something ever happens, I can grab my backpack and I'm gone because I have everything in it. So we get to the Bahamas and uh, with Joe and Joe falls off the boat with his cell phone. So we're at the marina. He gets down. He gets there. He gets his cell phone out of the water, and he's so mad. He's angry, and you know we're over there. Obviously, I have a cell phone. Everybody else has cell phones, and he's like, "Man," he goes, "I just can't believe this." And I'm like, "Oh, don't worry about it. I got an extra one because I always carry an unlocked iPhone with me because whenever I'm in the Bahamas, I have my uh, my Bahamian SIM card that I just put in the phone, so people just call me on that." So Joe's like, "Man, you always have everything, don't you?" And we pulled this phone out of the water, wiped off the SIM card, stuck it in the extra phone. And, you know, that was a, a long time running joke with that. But And I still have that phone. It's a little iPhone 5C. It's blue. It's my son's phone that I had forever. I have it unlocked. So, you know, it's just awesome. something you have. That could be like your superhero power. It's like, <laughs> you know, you just always say, like, yeah. I'm out of this. Here you go, man. I got you covered. Well, I have to say, when I'm on a boat with you and, you know, if someone needs anything that has to do with anything with audio video, yep. you're pulling it out. Like paparazzi was chasing us. You'd be able to sell your stuff off and be fine. Batteries, batteries, batteries. That's all I can say. <laughs> Always have extra batteries. All right. Absolutely. Well, we got uh, we should we could be uh, wrapping this up here. Uh, shout out to Fishing EBC, who uh, I, he, he put some emojis on there. I can't really see exactly what it is, but there's some thumbs up. So shout out to you guys. Um, and, uh, all right, well, this is pretty much it. Uh, let, one, one more question. Uh, anything else you got today, Anthony, uh, that, you know, what's, what's one tip that you could give all the, the fishermen out there and fisher women? I guess, uh, take care of your equipment the way you want it to take care of you. So, you know, take care of the boat, take care of the rods and reels, you know, take care of the people that are go fishing with you because, you know, it, once you're out of the boat, like I said, once you get away from land, you know, it, it's all you. So. Whatever your A game is, you should always have to have it with you. And, you know, make sure your reels and rods are, you know, in all great working condition. They're clean. They're oiled. Make sure your hooks aren't all rusty and, you know, you can't find this. Organization is key, you know, but you just have fun. You know, you just can't forget to have fun. Well said. And uh, we'll wrap it up with uh, Mr. Paul Gage here. Captain Paul, what do, what do you have to, to finish us off here today? Yeah, so I got I got a couple of things. We started this talking about tournaments, and um, we have the Reeling Freedom Foundation. And so every year we do one large tournament. We call it the Warrior Shootout. Um, I have the Marine Corps Color Guard comes down there. We have uh, the big flag come down there. We have all kinds of sponsors, Pro Marine, Angler Armory. It's a huge event. Last year, I think we had over 1,000 people at Bay Pines Marina for this, this uh, big event to raise awareness for PTSD for veterans. That's on March 6th this year down at Bay Pines Marina. And um, we're looking for it to be a huge event. We'll bring in some charter cabins that will take veterans out. We do kind of a lottery system. So um, it's an inshore slam tournament. And if you sign up for a really freedom veteran to go on your boat, you get entered into a different tournament where you can win an extra thousand dollars just for having a veteran on your boat. And that's usually sponsored by one of our sponsors or something like that. So it's a pretty big event. Uh, we've also uh, partnered with Pocket Change Fishing Charters this year, and on April 21st, which is a Wednesday, we're going to do a, a huge event. We're calling it Veterans on the Water, and so veterans can go online and sign up, and uh, we've got tons of charter captains signed up, and we're just going to take veterans out that day and do a huge event on the water. Um, veterans, not going to cost them anything. They're going to have a shirt. They're going to have all kinds of swag. Um, it's going to be a great event. So we have uh, April 21st is... Or no, March 6th is the Reeling Freedom Warrior Shootout. And then April 21st is a huge event we're doing with Pocket Change Fishing Charters. And um, it's all for veterans. It's all free. It doesn't cost those guys a dime. We never charge a dime and we never take a dime from it. We're 100% volunteer based, 100% 501c3. 
Um, we've got a lot of sponsors that are great to us. Angler Armory is our biggest one. Um, we've got Captain Mike Anderson from Real Animals, big supporter of us. Pro Marine down there in Bay Pines, huge sponsor of us. We got Fireside Pizza here. It's local. They're a big sponsor of ours. And uh, Divine Brewery and Marine Max. Marine Max is supporting us heavily this year. Um, we're possibly getting that Aquila 28 uh, Power Cat, which is going to be sponsored Reeling Freedom Marine Max. So it's going to be a pretty exciting 2021. I, we're, we're, we're optimistic. It's going to be a great year. And my wife works for Marine Max and she books the charters down to the BVIs. So um, I'm a Marine Max captain. So unfortunately, I have to go to the BVIs like every quarter. Oh, That's geez. horrible. <laughs> oh man kelly make sure you share that information with us because i'm sure there's plenty of customers clients and friends that i have here including myself that have trailer boats that would definitely make it over there for those yeah because we need more captains i'm not saying that we uh opened a can of worms but we've uh we've published this great awesome event and um we're getting a lot of response we've got a lot of veterans signed up so um i just hope and pray that we can have enough boats enough captains in order to um, bring all these veterans out in the water. Cause you know, us here at Reeling Freedom, we don't discriminate against anybody. You know, it's not like, okay, you can get on my boat. If you're missing a left leg and you're missing your right finger, you can get on the boat. No, we don't discriminate against anybody. You know, when veterans get on the boat, I don't say, what's your disability? I don't ask them that. You know what? Right. I am a hundred percent disabled. You know, you just don't know when you look at someone. So you know what, if they want to give me the information, they can give it to me but I don't pry it out of them, you know, right. Nine out of 10 when we're out on the water and we're fishing, they want to talk about it because they know that we can relate. Mm -hmm. But if you see a veteran and you're not a veteran and that veteran is missing a leg, do you feel comfortable asking them, Hey, where'd you lose your leg? No, it's not a good thing to ask them. But if you're a veteran, you know, and I was in Ramadi, I was in Iraq, I was in Afghanistan, I was in Jordan. Hey man, mm -hmm. when'd you lose your leg? Chances are, it's probably there, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah, well, really, yeah. We, do, we do everything for veterans. Well, definitely check it out. Uh, it's for a great cause and, uh, you know, get out there on the water. And, and as Anthony stated a few times, I mean, that's just your opportunity to get back, get out there and, uh, and just relax a little bit too. So, uh, of course the theme today has been fishing, uh, Florida coastal fishing. Uh, and, uh, thank you everybody for tuning in today. Uh, check us out next week, 3 PM on Monday. Uh, we'll have the captains back, uh, for an all new episode of boating tips live and uh captain paul captain anthony uh appreciate you guys being on today and uh we'll see you soon thanks, thanks guys. Sorry, guys have a good one we'll see everybody later have a great day